I had a, uh, uh, the, the great professor, the great critic, John Fraser. Not the other wonderful John Fraser no, with the bow tie. No, not the bow tie. Who, who represented the yeah. Globe and Mail in China. No. I like him very much, but that's not the John Fraser I'm talking about. the other John Fraser? The other John Fraser wrote Violence in the Arts, 1974, Cambridge University Press. Wrote America and the Patterns of Chivalry, 1992. And was my professor for poetry at Dalhousie University, 1986 to 87. Uh, and and uh, his way of teaching, I've always tried to emulate. I've never done it. I've never been able to get to the level that he was able to practice teaching at, which was essentially to withdraw himself from the graduate class that I had with him and let the students argue with each other about the meaning of the text. I try all the time. I try to get my students to argue with each other. I try, and I'm delighted when they do. But they, they, They're reluctant to engage, to commit, to... Yeah, probably because they haven't read the material. <laughs> So I'm left to fill in the blanks. I'm left to 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 do the background, so on. But I and I tell them, I say, look, you know, you want a really great participation grade, you got to participate. You got to you got to open up your mouth. You got to say some things. How much of the remark uh, is participation? 20 percent. Yeah, sometimes it's twenty five. That's your choice. It's my choice. That's your choice. Yeah, we can go as high as twenty five, um, in our in our in terms of the department's rules, but I usually go for twenty. But I remind everyone, I say, you know, you want an A, you're going to get a B, unless you have a very good participation grade. Which uh, means being vocal in the group. Vocal and knowledgeable. you got, you got something to say, right. and, and it's learned because you've read the material, and, you, and, and you're concerned with the material. You want to debate somebody about this material. And I always try to find provocative materials for everyone to engage with. Uh, and so on to try and get the right. But to come back to John Fraser, the John Fraser, the other John Fraser, um, as I say, his his method of teaching was was basically let the students argue and debate with each other, and and I flourished in that in that particular class, and it was it was very dynamic, very very. Why good. I can't imagine why. <laughs> you were the quiet guy in the corner, right? Well, the guy I, who never spoke. I was the quiet guy in the corner. No, I was, and the, that course was a year course, and when that course began. I, 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 I'd completed my BA in honors English at University of Waterloo. I'd gone back, I'd gone back to Nova Scotia. I'd been a social worker in little black rural communities in Nova Scotia in the Annapolis Valley. I wasn't very good at it. Uh, but, and I, in fact, after a year of doing that, I was ready to go back to university and do a master's degree in English. Very happy, very ready to do that. So I did, and Dal accepted me and gave me some money, which was very important, of course. So I ended up going going to Dell and, and taking that course. But I was coming into this, this Master of Arts class and PhD level class with a feeling of inferiority. Because I'm a black kid from the north end of Halifax. I'm 25, 26 years old now. But I'm still thinking of myself as, as this working class uh, kid. Uh, and all of a sudden I'm in a class with guys who are doing PhDs. And I'm thinking, oh, I, how am I gonna survive this? So in the first term, I did write a dynamite paper on Baudelaire. I wrote a dynamite paper on Baudelaire because I was scared to death of, of failing. So I, I worked, 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 and drank, 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 and tight, tight, tight. And there it was, an A-plus paper. Whew! Lucky. But I was still very, very, very shy and afraid to voice my opinions about the works we were studying. I would just sit there. I sometimes had a hat, and I'd pull it down. So nobody could see where my eyes were. I might even close my eyes a little bit and snooze a little bit. And, or the cat would come along and stroke the cat. He would always serve coffee and cookies. You know, I'd sip the coffee, take a cookie. But I wouldn't say anything. How big was the class? Oh, about a dozen, I think, 10 or 12 of us in the class. I really felt intimidated by everybody else, especially PhD candidates. And you were the only non-white person in the class? Yes, I was. Yeah, so that probably played into my thinking too. It's like, oh, I, you know, I, I better not say it because if I say something stupid, everybody's going to think, oh, what's this guy doing? What's this black guy doing mm -hmm. in this class? All right, so uh, I thought I should just uh, just be quiet. Although I was happy that I did the Baudelaire paper, but then Fraser said to me you know, for the second term, he said, "I want you to write a paper on free verse," and I couldn't do it. I tried. I did produce something, 
but the topic was just so large. I could not conceive of a way to write about free verse in 15 pages, double space, that was going to do the subject. You know, the uh, Dalhousie Library had rows, rows, shelves of books on free verse. How was I going to do a 15 page paper on free verse? So I wiped out. I couldn't do it. I, I, I presented the paper and I knew that it was not very good. I knew that. But when I presented the paper, I also presented this collage of different types of verse. Because I felt moved to do a collage. And I was also thinking of my father's example. Uh, and, and threw together this collage, photocopied collage, collage of different kinds of free verse, which was very popular with the class, with my classmates. And popular with, with Fraser, too. But he asked me to come and see him. And I knew when I went to see him, it was not going to be good news. So I sat down and softly said, how do you think you did on that paper, Mr. Clark? I said, I don't think I did very well. He said, you're right. <laughs> and there were only two papers in that class. There was one paper each term. You only had two kicks at the can. That's it. So I'm thinking, holy smokes, this is like January late January 1987, oh my golly, I wiped out on a paper on free verse, and I'm a poet, I'm a published poet, and I could not get this paper together. And so, of course, I asked him the standard question that every student in such a fix asks the professor, what can I do to improve the situation? It's like, can I, may I do extra work? May I do another paper? No. <laughs> and I'm thinking, holy smokes, I got one good paper on Baudelaire, and I got one bad paper on free verse. Where am I going to end up with a mark for this class? He said, there's one thing you can do. You can be more active in the class. Word to the wise. I know I can be very dense at times, but other times I can be alert. And when he said, you know, you, know, you, be, you speak out more, be more active in the class. We'll see where things are at the end of the, at the, end of the term, at the end of the course. Whoa. After that, I was irrepressible. I came to every class armed and locked and loaded, ready, ready to fire everybody. Because I had the poems all memorized, I had them all understood, I had them all interpreted. And so somebody got up and said, well, I think this, I said, no, blah, 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 blah. you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And it was like, I was, I was like in a boxing ring after that. Were you acting or is this a part of George that was, had been dormant? Wait a minute, was this the new version of George or had you just been dormant because of the class situation. Yeah, I just felt, I felt intimidated. So you I was went like, I, yeah, I was so the real George reemerged. Yeah. Okay. So when he said, okay, you know, let the boxing gloves come off, and it's like, all right, they're off. Let's go for it. And so every class after that, and everybody loved it. All, everybody loved it because after that, the class was exciting. Not to say it wasn't exciting, interesting before, but it was just now, no one knew what was going to happen next. What line was going to get a reaction? what line was going to be counterattacked in some way, shape, or form. And so everybody then got into a melee. It turned into a melee, uh, uh, an oratoric, rhetorical melee. And, but we'd have to go back to the text and say, well, read the line. Read the line in this context. Understand it in this way. Look at what this poet is doing. Look at his history or her history. Look at the biography to understand what the poem is saying. And, and Fraser's uh, general attitude in that class was not to say anything but simply to, to frown if he was questioning a point you were making or, or to nod his head vigorously in agreement if he liked what he was hearing. So after that, he was nodding all the time. <laughs> when I would throw down a point or, or make another point and people in the, my class is saying, well, they weren't sure, he, 